Are you tired of feeling constantly distracted and unproductive in today's fast-paced world? Then you won't want to miss our summary of Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport. In this book, Newport explores the concept of deep work, the ability to focus without distraction on a cognitively demanding task, and how it can lead to greater success in our personal and professional lives. If you're someone who struggles with distractions, whether it's social media, email, or even just the chatter in your own mind, then this book is definitely for you. Newport provides practical tips and strategies for cultivating deep work habits, and backs it up with research and real-life examples. But don't just take our word for it, stay tuned for our summary and see for yourself how deep work can transform the way you work and live. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that like button, leave us a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel for more book summaries and productivity tips. And if you're interested in getting your own copy of Deep Work, we've included a link in the description below. Let's get started. Introduction, Deep Work is Valuable. As you begin Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport, you are introduced to the concept of deep work, a state of intense concentration and focus that allows us to produce high-quality work and achieve our goals. Newport argues that in today's fast-paced and constantly connected world, deep work has become a rare and valuable commodity. In the introduction, Newport sets out to explore the importance of deep work and why it's so hard to achieve in our modern society. He notes that we live in a culture that values busyness and multitasking, and that we are constantly bombarded by distractions and interruptions that make it difficult to focus deeply on any one task or project. Newport goes on to explain that deep work is not just about working hard or being productive, it's about producing work that is meaningful and impactful. He cites examples of successful individuals who have achieved great things by cultivating a mindset of deep work and notes that this type of work is becoming increasingly valuable in today's economy. However, Newport acknowledges that achieving deep work is not easy. He notes that our brains are wired to seek out distractions and that our modern technology has made it easier than ever to succumb to these distractions. He also acknowledges that deep work can be mentally exhausting and requires a great deal of discipline and practice. Despite these challenges, Newport argues that deep work is essential for anyone who wants to achieve success and make a meaningful impact in their field. In the following chapters, he sets out to explore the rules and strategies for cultivating a mindset of deep work and achieving focused success in a distracted world. Get ready to dive deep into the world of deep work and discover how you can harness its power to achieve your own success. Part 1. The Idea As you open the first part of Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport, you are immediately struck by the author's bold claim that deep work is a rare and valuable commodity in today's fast-paced and constantly connected world. Newport argues that in order to succeed in our careers and personal lives, we must learn to cultivate a mindset of deep work, a state of intense concentration and focus that allows us to produce high-quality work and achieve our goals. In this section, Newport sets out to explore the idea of deep work in depth, examining what it is, why it matters, and why it's so hard to achieve in our modern world. Get ready to dive deep into the world of deep work and discover how you can harness its power to achieve your own success. Chapter 1, Deep Work is Rare Cal Newport, the author begins by making a bold claim that deep work is a rare and valuable commodity in today's society. He argues that our modern world is full of distractions and interruptions that make it difficult to focus deeply on any one task or project. As a result, we've become accustomed to a culture of shallow work tasks that are easy to accomplish but don't require much concentration or effort. Newport goes on to explain that deep work is not only rare, but also highly valuable. He cites several examples of successful individuals from writers to entrepreneurs who have achieved great things by cultivating a mindset of deep work. These people, he argues, were able to produce high-quality work because they were able to focus deeply and eliminate distractions. However, Newport acknowledges that deep work is not easy to achieve. He notes that our brains are wired to seek out distractions and that our modern technology has made it easier than ever to succumb to these distractions. He also acknowledges that deep work can be mentally exhausting and requires a great deal of discipline and practice. Despite these challenges, Newport argues that deep work is essential for anyone who wants to achieve success and make a meaningful impact in their field. 
In the remainder of the book, he sets out to explore the rules and strategies for cultivating a mindset of deep work and achieving focused success in a distracted world. Chapter 2, Deep Work is Meaningful. In Chapter 2, Cal Newport explores the meaning and importance of deep work. He argues that deep work is not just about working hard or being productive, it's about producing work that is meaningful and impactful. Newport cites several examples of individuals who have achieved great things by focusing deeply on their work. He notes that many successful writers, musicians, and scientists have been able to produce groundbreaking work by immersing themselves in their craft and eliminating distractions. Newport also explains that deep work is important because it allows us to develop skills and expertise that are highly valuable in today's economy. He notes that in a world where automation and outsourcing are becoming increasingly common, the ability to produce high-quality work that requires deep expertise is becoming more and more valuable. However, Newport acknowledges that deep work is not easy to achieve. He notes that it requires a great deal of focus and mental energy, and that it can be difficult to sustain this level of concentration for long periods of time. He also notes that deep work can be mentally exhausting, and that it's important to take breaks and recharge in order to maintain productivity. Despite these challenges, Newport argues that deep work is essential for anyone who wants to achieve success and make a meaningful impact in their field. In the following chapters, he sets out to explore the rules and strategies for cultivating a mindset of deep work and achieving focused success in a distracted world. Chapter 3, Deep Work is Hard. In Chapter 3, Cal Newport delves into the difficulty of achieving deep work in our modern society. He notes that our culture has become increasingly distracted, with constant interruptions and a focus on multitasking instead of deep concentration. Newport argues that in order to achieve deep work, we must be willing to embrace discomfort and push ourselves beyond our comfort zones. He notes that deep work requires a level of mental intensity that can be uncomfortable and even painful at times, but that this discomfort is necessary in order to achieve meaningful results. The chapter also explores the concept of flow, a state of deep concentration and focus that allows us to produce high-quality work. Newport notes that achieving flow requires a combination of challenge and skill, and that we must be willing to push ourselves beyond our current abilities in order to achieve this state. Newport also acknowledges that deep work is not something that can be achieved overnight. It requires a great deal of practice and discipline to cultivate the mindset and habits necessary for deep work. However, he argues that the rewards of deep work are well worth the effort, as it allows us to produce work that is truly meaningful and impactful. In the following chapters, Newport sets out to explore the rules and strategies for achieving deep work, including the importance of eliminating distractions, embracing boredom, and developing rituals and routines that support deep concentration. Part 2, The Rules As you begin Part 2 of Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport, you are introduced to the idea of the rules, specific strategies, and techniques for achieving deep work in a distracted world. Newport explains that these rules are not one-size-fits-all solutions, but rather a set of guidelines that can be adapted and customized to fit your individual needs and circumstances. Chapter 4, Rule Number 1, Work Deeply. In Chapter 4 of Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport, the author introduces the first rule of deep work, work deeply. Newport argues that in order to achieve deep work, we must be willing to eliminate distractions and focus our attention on a single task or project for an extended period of time. Newport notes that deep work requires a level of mental intensity that can be uncomfortable and even painful at times, but that this discomfort is necessary in order to achieve meaningful results. He also explains that deep work is not just about working hard or being productive, it's about producing work that is meaningful and impactful. To achieve deep work, Newport recommends several strategies, including the use of time blocks, dedicated periods of time during which you focus exclusively on a single task or project. He also recommends minimizing or eliminating distractions, such as email and social media, during these time blocks. Newport notes that achieving deep work is not easy, and that it requires a great deal of practice and discipline. He recommends starting with small time blocks and gradually increasing the amount of time you spend in deep work. Finally, Newport notes that achieving deep work requires a certain level of mental preparation. He recommends setting clear goals and objectives for your deep work sessions and developing a clear understanding of what you hope to achieve. 
By following these strategies and embracing the first rule of deep work, working deeply, Newport argues that anyone can achieve focused success in a distracted world. Chapter 5, Embrace Boredom. In Chapter 5, Cal Newport explores the importance of embracing boredom in order to achieve deep work. Newport notes that in our modern society, we have become accustomed to constant stimulation and entertainment, and that we often use distractions to avoid boredom. However, Newport argues that boredom is actually essential for achieving deep work. He notes that when we allow ourselves to experience boredom, we create a space for our minds to wander and explore new ideas. This can lead to creative breakthroughs and new insights that we might not have discovered otherwise. To embrace boredom, Newport recommends several strategies, including taking breaks from technology and allowing yourself to be alone with your thoughts. He also recommends developing a sense of curiosity and wonder, and being open to new ideas and experiences. Newport notes that embracing boredom can be challenging, especially at first. However, he argues that it is an essential part of achieving deep work and that the rewards of this type of work are well worth the effort. By embracing boredom and creating space for our minds to wander, Newport argues that we can tap into our creative potential and achieve deep work that is truly meaningful and impactful. Chapter 6, Quit Social Media In Chapter 6, Cal Newport explores the second rule of deep work, embracing the blank screen. Newport argues that in order to achieve deep work, we must be willing to sit down and start working, even if we don't have a clear idea of what we're going to create. Newport notes that many people are afraid of the blank screen, the feeling of staring at a blank page or screen without any clear direction or inspiration. However, he argues that this fear can be overcome by embracing the uncertainty and allowing ourselves to explore new ideas and possibilities. To embrace the blank screen, Newport recommends several strategies, including setting aside time for unstructured thinking and brainstorming, and allowing yourself to make mistakes and experiment with new ideas. He also recommends developing a sense of curiosity and wonder, and being open to new possibilities and perspectives. Newport notes that embracing the blank screen can be challenging, especially at first. However, he argues that it is an essential part of achieving deep work and that the rewards of this type of work are well worth the effort. By embracing the uncertainty and allowing ourselves to explore new ideas and possibilities, Newport argues that we can tap into our creative potential and achieve deep work that is truly meaningful and impactful. Chapter 7, Rule Number 2, Embrace the Blank Screen. In Chapter 7, Cal Newport explores the third rule of deep work, quitting social media. Newport argues that social media is one of the biggest distractions in our modern world and that it can have a profound impact on our ability to focus and achieve deep work. Newport notes that social media is designed to be addictive, with constant notifications and updates that keep us coming back for more. He argues that this constant distraction can make it difficult to focus on any one task or project for an extended period of time. To quit social media, Newport recommends several strategies, including setting limits on your use of social media, deleting social media apps from your phone, and finding alternative ways to stay informed and connected with others. Newport notes that quitting social media can be challenging, especially if it has become a habit or a source of social validation. However, he argues that it is an essential part of achieving deep work and that the rewards of this type of work are well worth the effort. By quitting social media and eliminating distractions, Newport argues that we can free up our time and mental energy to focus on the tasks and projects that truly matter. This, in turn, can lead to greater productivity, creativity, and success in our personal and professional lives. Chapter 8, Drain the Shallows. In Chapter 8, Cal Newport explores the importance of draining the shallows in order to achieve deep work. Newport notes that many of us spend a significant amount of time on shallow work tasks that are easy to accomplish but don't require much concentration or effort. Newport argues that in order to achieve deep work, we must be willing to eliminate or delegate shallow work and focus our attention on the tasks and projects that truly matter. This requires a level of discipline and mental stamina, as well as a willingness to say no to tasks that are not essential. To drain the shallows, Newport recommends several strategies, including creating a list of your most important tasks and prioritizing them, delegating tasks to others when possible, and setting aside time for deep work on a regular basis. Newport notes that draining the shallows can be challenging, especially if we have become accustomed to a culture of busyness and multitasking. 
However, he argues that it is an essential part of achieving deep work and that the rewards of this type of work are well worth the effort. By draining the shallows and focusing our attention on the tasks and projects that truly matter, Newport argues that we can achieve a level of productivity and success that is truly meaningful and impactful. Chapter 9, Rule Number 3, Quit Social Media. In Chapter 9 of Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport, the author explores the third rule of deep work in greater detail, quitting social media. Newport argues that social media is one of the biggest distractions in our modern world and that it can have a profound impact on our ability to achieve deep work. Newport notes that social media is designed to be addictive, with constant notifications and updates that keep us coming back for more. He argues that this constant distraction can make it difficult to focus on any one task or project for an extended period of time. To quit social media, Newport recommends several strategies, including setting limits on your use of social media, deleting social media apps from your phone, and finding alternative ways to stay informed and connected with others. Newport also addresses some of the common objections to quitting social media, such as the fear of missing out on important information or the belief that social media is necessary for building a personal brand. Ultimately, Newport argues that quitting social media is an essential part of achieving deep work and that the rewards of this type of work are well worth the effort. By eliminating distractions and focusing our attention on the tasks and projects that truly matter, we can achieve a level of productivity and success that is truly meaningful and impactful. Chapter 10, Drain the Shallows, Part 2. This chapter builds upon the previous chapter's discussion of the importance of minimizing shallow work in order to maximize deep work. Newport argues that many professionals to date spend too much time on shallow work, such as answering emails, attending meetings, and responding to social media notifications. While these tasks may feel productive in the moment, they often do not contribute to long-term success and can even be detrimental to one's ability to focus and produce high-quality work. To combat shallow work, Newport recommends implementing a shallow work budget that sets limits on the amount of time and energy spent on these tasks. He also suggests delegating or outsourcing shallow work whenever possible and being mindful of the ways in which shallow work can creep into one's schedule and distract from deep work. Ultimately, Newport argues that by prioritizing deep work and minimizing shallow work, professionals can achieve greater success and fulfillment in their careers. Part 3, The Training. Part 3 of Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport is titled The Training. In this section, Newport provides practical advice and strategies for training oneself to engage in deep work consistently and effectively. This section is essential for anyone looking to improve their productivity, creativity, and overall success in their professional and personal lives. Chapter 11, The Law of Productivity. In this chapter, Newport introduces the concept of the law of productivity, which states that high quality work produced equals to time spent, times, intensity of focus. Newport argues that many people make the mistake of assuming that more time spent working automatically translates to more productivity and success. However, he points out that this is not always the case, as time spent working is only one part of the productivity equation. The other crucial factor is the intensity of focus that one brings to their work. To illustrate the law of productivity, Newport gives the example of two writers, one who spends eight hours a day writing but is constantly distracted and unfocused, and another who spends four hours a day writing but is completely focused and immersed in their work. According to the law of productivity, the second writer will likely produce higher quality work in less time than the first writer, because they are able to maintain a deeper level of focus and concentration. Newport emphasizes that in order to maximize productivity and success, it is essential to cultivate the ability to focus deeply and consistently. He provides several strategies for doing so, including setting clear goals, eliminating distractions, and establishing a regular routine and schedule for deep work sessions. Overall, this chapter highlights the importance of focusing on the quality and intensity of one's work, rather than simply the amount of time spent working. By embracing the law of productivity and training oneself to work deeply and intensely, individuals can achieve greater success and fulfillment in their professional and personal lives. Chapter 12, Ritualize. In this chapter, Newport emphasizes the importance of establishing rituals and routines to support deep work. 
Newport argues that rituals and routines are essential for creating the conditions necessary for deep work to thrive. By establishing specific habits and practices around deep work, individuals can signal to their brains that it is time to focus and concentrate deeply and can help minimize distractions and interruptions. To illustrate the power of rituals, Newport provides several examples of successful individuals who have incorporated rituals into their daily routines. For example, he describes how the author Haruki Murakami wakes up at 4 a.m. every day and writes for several hours before going for a run, and how the composer John Adams sets aside specific times each day for deep work. Newport provides several strategies for creating effective rituals, including identifying specific locations and times for deep work, establishing pre-work rituals to help transition into a focused state of mind, and tracking progress and productivity to maintain motivation. Overall, this chapter emphasizes the importance of establishing consistent and effective rituals and routines to support deep work. By doing so, individuals can create the conditions necessary for sustained focus and productivity and can achieve greater success and fulfillment in their professional and personal lives. Chapter 13, Make Grand Gestures. In Chapter 13, Newport argues that making significant and deliberate changes to one's environment can be a powerful way to support deep work. Newport suggests that individuals who are serious about deep work should consider making grand gestures, bold and dramatic actions that signal a commitment to deep work and help create the conditions necessary for sustained focus and productivity. These gestures could include things like setting up a dedicated workspace, disconnecting from the internet, or even taking a sabbatical to focus on a specific project. To illustrate the power of grand gestures, Newport provides several examples of successful individuals who have made significant changes to their environment to support deep work. For example, he describes how the writer J.K. Rowling checked into a luxury hotel to finish writing the final Harry Potter book, and how the musician Brian Eno created a specialized studio to support his creative work. Newport acknowledges that making grand gestures may not be practical or feasible for everyone, but emphasizes that even small changes to one's environment can have a significant impact on focus and productivity. He encourages readers to think creatively about how they can make changes to their workspace, schedule, and habits to support deep work. Overall, this chapter emphasizes the importance of taking deliberate and intentional actions to create the conditions necessary for deep work. By making grand gestures and other changes to their environment, individuals can signal a commitment to focus and productivity and can achieve greater success and fulfillment in their professional and personal lives. Chapter 14 don't work alone. In this chapter, Newport argues that collaboration and social support are essential for achieving deep work and maximizing productivity. Newport acknowledges that deep work often requires solitude and isolation, but emphasizes that this does not mean that individuals should work in complete isolation. Instead, he suggests that individuals should seek out social support and collaboration to help them stay motivated, share ideas, and receive feedback on their work. To illustrate the power of collaboration, Newport provides several examples of successful individuals who have collaborated with others to achieve deep work. For example, he describes how the physicist Richard Feynman worked closely with other scientists to solve complex problems, and how the writer C. S. Lewis regularly met with other writers to discuss their work. Newport provides several strategies for finding and building a community of support, including joining professional groups and organizations, attending conferences and workshops, and seeking out mentors and advisors. He also emphasizes the importance of giving back to others and building a network of support by sharing one's own knowledge and expertise. Overall, this chapter highlights the importance of social support and collaboration for achieving deep work and maximizing productivity. By seeking out and building a community of support, individuals can stay motivated, share ideas, and receive feedback on their work, ultimately leading to greater success and fulfillment in their professional and personal lives. Part 4, The Idea in Practice Part 4 of Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World by Cal Newport is titled The Idea in Practice. In this section, Newport provides real-world examples and case studies of individuals and organizations that have successfully implemented the principles of deep work in their lives and work. Part 4 is especially valuable for readers who are looking for concrete examples and practical strategies for incorporating deep work into their own lives and work. 
By examining the successes and challenges of others who have implemented deep work, readers can gain inspiration and insights for how to apply these principles to their own lives. Chapter 15, Execute Like a Business. In Chapter 15, Newport argues that individuals should approach their work and productivity in the same way that businesses approach their operations and strategy. Newport suggests that individuals should adopt a business mindset when it comes to their work, which involves setting clear goals, tracking progress, and constantly seeking ways to improve and optimize productivity. He emphasizes the importance of being intentional and strategic about how one spends their time and energy, and of constantly seeking ways to eliminate inefficiencies and distractions. To illustrate the power of the business mindset, Newport provides several examples of successful individuals who have applied business principles to their work, such as the writer Ryan Holiday, who approaches his writing projects like a product launch, and the entrepreneur Tim Ferriss, who uses data and analytics to optimize his productivity and decision making. Newport provides several strategies for adopting a business mindset, including setting clear goals and metrics, tracking progress and productivity, and regularly seeking feedback and input from others. He also emphasizes the importance of being open to experimentation and constantly seeking ways to improve and optimize one's work. Overall, this chapter highlights the importance of adopting a strategic and intentional approach to one's work and of constantly seeking ways to improve and optimize productivity. By embracing a business mindset, individuals can achieve greater success and fulfillment in their professional and personal lives. Chapter 16, Be Lazy, A Productivity Manifesto. In this chapter, Newport challenges the traditional notion that productivity is all about working harder and longer hours, and instead suggests that individuals should embrace laziness as a way to maximize their productivity. Newport argues that laziness, when approached strategically, can be a powerful tool for achieving deep work and maximizing productivity. By being selective about the tasks and projects one takes on, and by eliminating unnecessary or inefficient work, individuals can free up more time and energy to focus on the most important and impactful work. To illustrate the power of laziness, Newport provides several examples of successful individuals who have adopted a lazy approach to productivity, such as the writer Graham Greene, who famously said that he only wrote when he felt like it, and the entrepreneur Derek Sivers, who focuses on doing only what he is uniquely qualified to do and outsourcing the rest. Newport provides several strategies for embracing laziness and maximizing productivity, including identifying the most important and impactful tasks, eliminating unnecessary or inefficient work, and delegating or outsourcing tasks whenever possible. He also emphasizes the importance of rest and recovery, and of taking breaks and downtime to recharge and refocus. Overall, this chapter challenges traditional notions of productivity and highlights the power of laziness when approached strategically. By being selective about the tasks and projects one takes on, and by maximizing rest and recovery, individuals can achieve greater productivity and success in their professional and personal lives. Chapter 17, Shut Down. In Chapter 17, Newport emphasizes the importance of establishing clear boundaries and routines around work and leisure time in order to maximize productivity and avoid burnout. Newport argues that in today's always connected world, it can be difficult to separate work and leisure time, and that this can lead to a lack of focus and productivity, as well as increased stress and burnout. To combat this, he suggests establishing clear routines and boundaries around work and leisure time, and being intentional about when and how one engages with work-related tasks and activities. To illustrate the power of shutting down, Newport provides several examples of successful individuals who have established clear boundaries around their work and leisure time, such as the writer Stephen King, who makes a point of taking weekends off from writing, and the entrepreneur Seth Godin, who avoids checking email or social media until afternoon each day. Newport provides several strategies for shutting down effectively, including setting clear work hours and sticking to them, establishing a shutdown ritual at the end of each workday to signal the transition to leisure time, and disconnecting from technology and work-related tasks during leisure time. Overall, this chapter highlights the importance of establishing clear boundaries and routines around work and leisure time, and of being intentional about how one spends their time and energy. By shutting down effectively, individuals can maximize their productivity, avoid burnout, and achieve greater success and fulfillment in their professional and personal lives. Conclusion, a deep life is a good life. 
In this section, Newport emphasizes the idea that deep work is not just a means to achieve professional success, but also a path to living a more fulfilling and meaningful life. Newport argues that by embracing deep work and minimizing shallow work and distractions, individuals can achieve greater productivity, creativity, and satisfaction in all areas of their lives. He emphasizes the importance of focusing on the most important and impactful work and of cultivating the ability to concentrate deeply and consistently. Newport also acknowledges that deep work is not easy and that it requires effort and discipline to cultivate. However, he emphasizes that the rewards of deep work, including greater success, fulfillment, and a sense of purpose, are well worth the effort. The conclusion of the book also includes a call to action for readers to embrace deep work in their own lives and to resist the distractions and shallow work that can so easily consume our time and energy. By doing so, Newport argues, individuals can achieve a deeper and more meaningful life, both personally and professionally. Overall, the conclusion of deep work, rules for focused success in a distracted world emphasizes the idea that deep work is not just a strategy for achieving professional success, but a path to living a more fulfilling and meaningful life. It encourages readers to embrace deep work and to cultivate the focus and discipline necessary to achieve it. Thanks for watching our summary of deep work by Cal Newport. We hope you found it insightful and informative. If you're ready to take your productivity to the next level, be sure to grab a copy of the book using the link in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, leave us a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to our channel for more book summaries and productivity tips. Trust us, you won't want to miss what's coming next.